Hey guys, welcome back. So I want to start off this reading by just letting you guys know that the energies have been intense, all right? Um, in the past couple of weeks, I'm sure that most of you have been feeling it. A lot of it is coming from your Divine Masculine and a lot of it is due to certain upgrades that are taking place currently, all right? And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of ascension that is going on at the moment and yeah, you're going to be feeling it emotionally, um, physically, in sleep, maybe your eating patterns. It's going to affect a lot of your just your daily functioning, okay? So do be aware of that because it's going to help you to just kind of move through it, all right? So yeah, with that said, I hope you guys are all doing well. And yeah, let's get into it. We're gonna just take a general look at what is going on within divine soulmate connections, okay? So whether that be divine soulmates or twin flames. And we're gonna start by looking at the masculine's energy. And then we're gonna move on to the feminine's energy where I do feel like there might be some important messages that want to come through. Actually, you know, the most important messages are going to be when we look at the divine feminine energies always, all right? Because you can control what you're doing. Um, you cannot control the masculine. So it really isn't of much <clears throat> help to you other than just, you know, being aware of what's going on. But when we look into your energy, that is where you can really, really work on yourself and just control your, your situation. So let's see what is going on with the masculines. And of course we'll be looking into what is coming up as well. All right, we have Goddess of the Moon. So this talks about intuition. Okay, so I feel like for the most part, some of them are having a difficult time understanding their intuition, but they are, they are tapping into it. They're listening to it, they're hearing it, they're feeling it, they just don't quite understand it. However, there's this alignment that is taking place and it's also because of the upgrades. And this is helping them to be more receptive to their intuition. I kind of feel like that was, I feel like that came through in the previous reading as well or something similar to that. So, okay, let's see what else. All right, we have shadow work. The answer is yes and bound. Okay, so, all right. I feel like this is confirmation to what I said with them tapping into their intuition because that is helping them to do shadow work. That is helping them to face certain fears, to face certain shadows within themselves, when, especially when it comes to something that they have been bound to, which pretty much all divine um, masculines as well as feminines are bound to something. There are negative attachments. It does not have to be a karmic partner. It could be just about anything. It could be a fear. Whatever that is, at the moment, it's their intuition taking over and they are investigating. That's why we have the answer is yes, because this is happening very, very intensely. That they are investigating just the details of their life and the details of of their emotions and of their thinking patterns. What is it that is keeping them back in their lives? What is it that is not giving them what they want? What is it within themselves that is serving as a barrier to finding their fulfillment? All right, this is what is happening within their shadow work. And this is obviously revolving around anything that they are attached to. Why are they attached to it? This is what they are investigating. What fears are they holding on to? What wounds have they not healed? So again, a lot of them may not um, consciously fully understand this process, but it is happening in, in different ways. All right, let's get into the tarot and get some more information here. reading uprights. I tend to do reversals when we get into the more complicated readings where there's the where we're also looking at the karmic element um, but for these 
more general readings, I prefer to just read upright. All right, so we have Death, the King of Wands, and the Empress. It's interesting because when I was um, when I was pre-shuffling the decks before turning on the camera, I had Death and Strength pop out for the feminines. All right, so I feel like there's major transformation happening for the both of you. So having Death as the very first card out, there's major transformations, and I feel like it's a Death of Ego here for the masculines. All right, and this is them standing strong. And all of this has to do with their Divine Feminine here, because we have the Empress showing up. I am going to clarify, but let me just get a, get a few more. Alright, so we're having quite a bit of Major Arcana come out. So this is major stuff that's happening at the moment. We have the Seven of Cups, the World, and the Fool. Okay, wow. Also the Ace of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Um, this, okay, so there is that not really understanding what is going on because the energies are so intense. There's the shadow work that is happening. They're feeling a lot of... Um, polar opposite emotions at the moment, which I feel was the case for the feminines very recently, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that did come up in the previous reading as well. So it's like now the masculines are going through that. They're feeling intense because they are beginning to understand that they have been wearing a mask, that they have been hiding themselves. They have been hiding things from themselves. They haven't been living authentically. All right, and that's what the shadow work is doing right now. It's bringing all of those things, all of their shadows, to the surface. All the lies they were telling themselves or everything they were trying to hide behind. Things they were trying to suppress. Okay, so on the one hand, they're feeling this intensity. And then on the other hand, they have their intuition coming through, helping them with this. So it feels like on the one end, it's something very negative having all these um, emotions arise and all these truths that they're realizing about their own self. And then on the other end of the spectrum, they have their intuition where they're also feeling this light. They're feeling like they're understanding themselves, which is something very positive. So it's this negative aspect to it and then this positive aspect to it, which can create a little bit of confusion for them because it's like the emotions are so mixed. Okay, that's... That's what I'm getting here. This is actually part of their transformation. This is helping them to transform. It's like merging, merging both energies. And in this way, they're finding their, their authentic self. Okay, now, with the world here, right under the King of Wands, this is them actually, from this transformation that is happening and even from this confusion that they're not really understanding they are finding power from that to close out cycles the cycles that they are closing out are these attachments the bound it's like they're leaving the past behind it's like they're becoming this like finding a new identity here and I love the fact that we have the fool right after the world, because the world is the very last card in the Major Arcana, closing out a, a cycle, closing out a chapter, and then the Fool is the very first one. So that's a new beginning. That's jumping into the unknown, fresh and clean, from a fresh new perspective, not knowing what lies ahead, but still moving in that direction anyway having that courage because they have the King of Wands because that's what the, the transformation is bringing out in them. And all of this is related to their Divine Feminine, right? The Fool is right under the, the, the Empress, right under the Divine Feminine. This is where that new chapter is leading them towards. So I, <clears throat> I don't even really feel like I need to clarify anything. Um, but I will. 
me clarify death. All right, because this was this was general. Um, the specifics are going to be different. All right, for each each situation, we have the Ten of Swords clarifying death. So this is all about endings, right? Which is in line with this World card. The this transformation. It's bringing about endings, but these endings are painful. Whatever they are, it could have just been a belief system for a lot of them. For others, it could be other relationships. It could be anything. It could be the way they were going about um, work. It could be the way that they felt about relationships, um, having a fear of commitment, for example. It could be, or having just a fear of being in a particular relationship. Whatever it is, it's major endings. This transformation that is also um, painful at the same time. Let me clarify the King of Wands. All right, I just had the Three of Swords also pop out, which is just really confirming um, the pain that they are currently go going through. And I do feel that for a lot of them, it's also this pain is related to not having the feminine at the moment. All right, so clarifying the King of Wands, we have judgment. What did I say? This is all about them. It's like reinventing themselves, being somebody new, finding themselves from the beginning. This is a huge transformation. This is no joke. <laughs> um, it's hard. It's hard to process that because that means it's like a death of who I am or who I was. It's not who I am, but... Because who you, who you really are never dies. But uh, it's a death of who I thought I was. And that's not an easy thing to do. And I feel like a lot of feminines have already done that in the past. <clears throat> Sometimes maybe not even in relation to your divine masculine. You know, certain things have happened in your lives that have made you reinvent yourself. Having to find yourself, again, from nothing. Realizing that your, your worth is not dependent on what you present um, to the world in a materialistic way. Your worth is not dependent on what kind of a job you have or um, how good you are at, I don't know, any given hobby or whatever. And now it's the masculine who is undergoing this process. <clears throat> Let me just clarify the Empress to see anything that might can we get the Emperor? I love this reading. I, I really love this reading today, guys. Um, it's hard. I mean, it's difficult what they're going through, but I feel like the purpose behind it and the drive and the motivation and the divine intervention behind this is just amazing. I mean, having the Emperor clarifying the Empress, wow. I mean, this is really that the energies are leading to a union, all right, of the masculine and the feminine here. This is the divine masculine feeling like you belong together. And you know, I mean, regardless of the divine feminine having accepted that this might never happen or whatever, that's irrelevant. This is just what I am seeing here, okay? We will get to the Divine Feminine right after this. <clears throat> All right, so let me clarify, let me clarify the Fool. I don't want to clarify all of them. We have the Magician. I'm telling you guys, this reading, like, wow. And I also have the Nine of Pentacles um, fall out, in case you want to ignore it, which does talk about independence and abundance, so, and freedom as well, which is also the Fool. So that's being, that's being free. That's being free of these previous um, influences, all right? That bound energy. This is what they're moving towards. This isn't um, that they're in this space yet, but I feel like this is what <clears throat> this closing out, this transformation is leading them towards. And you know, there's no set line like, oh, when am I... <clears throat> When am I in this Nine of Pentacles energy? It's a progression, okay? And this is why it's showing up here because they have already, like, clicked in to that path. Okay, and with the Magician here, this is something that they are manifesting, this new beginning. 
seeing things and living things being in a completely different way than from the past because they're closing out these cycles. All right. <clears throat> Let me move on to the feminines and then we'll see what is coming up in the near future. And we have broken heart. All right, Femmes. Yeah, I know. I know that a lot of you are healing this, but there's a reason why this is coming out, all right? And I know a lot of you have already processed um, a lot on this journey, all right? But I mean, there's still some pain that is there, okay? That's the message that I'm getting. I do feel like you, that a lot of you for the most part have healed it okay so because i i might be tapping into a lot of different groups just take this as it resonates okay there are some of you where this might be more um prominent than in others but the message is still the same okay because some of you might be holding on to a lot of pain and then some of you might just have some residual pain either way this is the message that wants to come through from spirit third party we have divine feminine and we have commitment that came out together with awakening all right so this third party could be anything okay anything that you might be holding on to outside of this relationship or this connection with your divine masculine something else that might be serving as a barrier i feel like spirit is bringing that to your attention for some of you it could be a relationship for others of you it could be uh, it could be anything okay just like it could be anything for the masculines when we talk about this with, for the masculines but i feel like there is something um that is serving as as a barrier to completely healing so <clears throat> this might be outside of the connection, but in some way it affects the connection. So for example, it could be some wounds from your past that are still carrying over and still affecting you, which make it more difficult to um, process abandonment wounds, for example, or to process um, the feelings of rejection or your sense of self-worth which might be related to the connection with the, with the masculine, but the root of the issue is, in, is from a third party, either from your past or in your current life. Okay, it could be anything. It could even be um, a bad habit, for example. All right, so then we have Divine Feminine, which, yeah, that's you. Um, commitment and Awakening. So I actually, what I actually feel this is about is your commitment to awakening. And I feel like this is a message for you to be committed to that. You know, whatever your heartbreak might be, whatever your pain might be, don't let that stop you from moving forward when it comes to your ascension and when it comes to your awakening. And it's not even just about the masculine. Again, there are a lot of energies at the moment trying to hold you down, trying to keep you back. There are a lot of triggers coming in. There's a lot of... Um, Fear that might be presenting itself and doubting yourself. Don't allow that to affect you as much. You can feel the emotions, you know, explore them. But ultimately, you know, remember that you have a commitment to your ascension, to your awakening. So let me just put those there. All right.
Monster. We have the Eight of Wands, the Two of Wands, and the Hermit. All right. So a little bit of again, I feel like I feel like this is just a theme that there's just like polar opposite energies at play here. It's just it's different for you now than it is from the masculines. I feel like the masculines are going through something more similar to what you have already gone through, and for you now it's like there's a part of you that is pushing you forward, and you're feeling this drive to move forward or to take some kind of an action. And then there's another part of you that's like, no, 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 you know, um, be still, be quiet, and don't do anything. And you're like stuck in the middle of that with the two of wands. And it's like you have both energies pulling you in opposite directions, and it's like you don't know which way to go. And this could um, play out in different ways for each of you. For example, for some of you, it could be... Um, should I take initiative and <clears throat> communicate with my masculine, for example, versus keeping to myself, keeping quiet? Um, for others of you, it could be um, wanting to take action in a, in a different way towards your masculine, maybe helping them out in some way in the 3D, or bringing things about so that you can have an encounter or if you're already in contact, just to help them. And then there's that other part of you that's saying, no, you know, just focus on your own self. And then for others of you, it might not even, it might not even be um, towards your masculine. It could just be towards things in your own life or just what you are thinking when it comes to your masculine. That on the one hand, you feel them coming forward, but then you feel that silence. And this confuses you and you don't know how you should be reacting to it so I feel like there's a little bit of that confusion um, for the feminines as well but just in a different way than for the masculines so let's see what else One sec to grab the card that fell. Alright, so we have the Magician, the Six of Cups, and the Sun. Alright. The message that I'm getting here is that no matter what you do, actually, this is so interesting. I feel like either way, you are... You are manifesting. You are manifesting this happiness. It's like the connection between the two of you is, oh, I feel like it's getting stronger. And it doesn't matter if you're in communication or not. It's the way that the energies are currently playing out. It's that goddess of the moon, the intuition for the masculines, in combination with them doing this shadow work and you being committed to your awakening, even if you do have some small setbacks or some doubts once in a while or, or you're, you're still having this pain, you're still, this is still moving you forward and it's like your energies are aligning. You are manifesting movement. And by going, it's like you can have, oh, okay, you can have both. There are certain things that you can do, just follow your intuition, okay, when it comes to what actions to take or what initiatives to take. Either way, working on yourself here as the hermit, that's still moving you forward the best okay that's that's what's moving you towards the sun that is what is moving you towards happiness and fulfillment and with the six of cups being here yeah okay so for a lot of you it could be that you are feeling very nostalgic for example um but i still get this the way that this is showing up for me 
is that there is a manifesting of this connection just becoming even stronger. And this is happening by you having focused on yourself as this hermit. You really being that divine feminine. It was right there. Yeah, I want the divine feminine out showing here. All right, let me use a different deck to clarify here. got the six of cups again yeah okay see so this hermit mode that you are in or if you're not just take this as a message then that is what it is it's it's making the connection stronger and I know that because occasionally I get these types of comments where it's like I don't care you know I don't want this but okay but if you're watching the video you know there's obviously something there and you know if this isn't your message it's not your message and that's okay but what I'm getting here is that you being in this hermit mode it does make this connection stronger regardless of whether or not you are in contact you going within and really I feel what's really going to help you at the moment in this hermit mode is dealing with that wound, dealing with rejection, dealing with abandonment, dealing with the pain of this journey, dealing with the pain of this, of the connection with the masculine because it's only when you have healed this pain that you can be in union energy, that you can be vibrating at that energy and come into that alignment. It's like you need to heal that pain first. And once you do, that is when you will have this acceptance of the situation and of the choices that the masculine has made or is making and you will be okay with whatever it is that their choice is and therefore you will still have that love for them but coming from that place of acceptance and it'll be unconditional love not saying that it isn't unconditional now but it's going to come with that acceptance and that detachment and only then can you be can you manifest the um, the union or the reunion that is in the potential here. That's the message here. I feel like that's why it was so important um, or that I felt that it was going to be important because it is. You have to heal the wound and process the victim mentality that you may have been in in the past before you can leave it behind. You can't just push it away or deny it away. So, um, yeah, you have to accept the loss first. Or even that the, that the um, masculine's choice might not be what you had wanted it to be. Then anything you manifest will be coming from a place of detachment and unconditional love simultaneously, which is going to put you in that vibration. And it will also be one of self-love. And that is what is going to bring about this Reconciliation, the Six of Cups, and the Sun. Happiness and Fulfillment. Alright, wow. Um, I don't feel like I need to actually clarify anything else because that message um, just came through very strongly. So I feel like that was actually... That was it. <clears throat> Alright, so let's move on to what is coming up in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I feel like this is it. It's this world and that and that fool. But let's see if we can get something um, more specific because I feel like this is a more ongoing process that they have entered right now. Um, 
So let's see, more specifically, just the next couple of weeks for the masculines. All right, the King of Swords, the Nine of Swords, and, and the Devil. All right, which this Devil is like that, it's like that bound card. So what I'm getting here is that there, there's going to be a lot of determination, a lot of um, thinking, a lot of being clear as to what it is that they, that they want. But that is going to bring with it a little bit of fear, which is not a bad thing, guys. Trust me. At the moment, the way this is playing out, okay, because we have the general energy here, the movement here. This is just being more specific. This devil, this fear is what needs to come up, right? It's that shadow work playing out, like it's actually playing out. It's these fears coming up in order for them to have clarity over them over these fears. And yeah, it's going to bring about some stress because it's hard. It's hard. If you've ever done shadow work, you know, it's freaking hard. It's hard and it can be very painful and very uncomfortable and it can cause you fear while you're going through it, but then you overcome it. And that's why we have the, the King of Swords as the very first card out because they're slashing <laughs> those negative attachments away. Yeah, it's it's not going to be easy and yeah, it's going to be um, stressful and painful. It might create a lot of anxiety for them, but that's how you know that you really are doing the work. So I, I feel like this intensity that I've been talking about, it's, it's continuing on. It's continuing on for the next um, week or so for the masculines as well. See if anything else wants to come through for the Femmies. All right, the Nine of Pentacles. It also had the Queen of Cups popping out there. All right, the Nine of Pentacles, the Seven of Cups, the High Priestess, and then also the Queen of Cups, which is kind of like on its own. Um, yeah, this is good. I mean, for you as well, I feel like with the Seven of Cups, just as I was saying, um, for the Masculines, it might be a little bit of confusion, but it's actually coming in more as having dreams. Dreams, visions, um, just feeling like you're seeing things and it, almost as if you don't know what is real and what isn't. Um, the Nine of Pentacles though, you, this is you really standing strong within your own power, okay? Things might feel difficult. As I said, the energies are intense. You might be feeling that pain or maybe you felt like you had released the pain that you had healed it and now it's like coming back. So that could just be some residue some residual pain that, you know, was kind of left there for you to deal with at a later time because, you know, I mean, you can only deal with so much at any given time, right? Um, so I do see you overcoming that with the sign of pentacles and really being able to keep that, that detachment, but in a way where it is also healing, okay? It's healing the pain. Um, again, I... The reason why I'm saying this with the Seven of Cups is because it's together with the High Priestess, which is also about intuition. And it, to me, it's very similar to the Goddess of the Moon that, that came out for the Masculines. All right, so this is you really becoming more intuitive. And again, it ha I feel like it has to do with the upgrades. And, you know, pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to any visions. Don't let doubt hold you back. Again, Seven of Cups could be that confusion. Feeling doubts. Okay, um... Your intuition right now is increasing. It's getting deeper. Or, you know, you can even take a course for increasing your, um, your intuition or developing it further, raising your vibration. All of these things are really going to help you. And then having that Queen of Cups here, that talks about, again, intuition, but also about you coming into that loving space or being vibrating at an energy of love, which happens 
as I said, for what we're discussing here, after having healed abandonment, rejection, and those, that pain. Like you're, you're com totally moving towards this divine feminine energy. The masculine is moving also towards their divine masculine energy, um, embodying that because they have the emperor here, clarifying the empress, which was just beautiful. So, all right, let's get the final messages. Please do give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you want a personal reading, all that information is in the description box. You don't have to email me ahead of time to ask me if, I, um, if I'm available. I am. So let's see. But of course you can email me if you have any extra questions. And we have a leg up and co-create. Wow, there is a lot of divine intervention at this moment. I feel like this this is you co-creating with the divine. This is you co-creating with the divine masculine. It's like your energies, like I said, it's, I feel like the connection is getting stronger. You are merging and then the, it's also the divine coming in, helping out with these upgrades and just really having things happen to help the shadow work move along and to help your healing move along. If, if for some of you, this could be a more specific message. If you are feeling um, called to assist the masculine in some way, as long as you are doing it from that detached, unconditional love space, I'm getting that, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, as long as it's done from that space and not from a place of attachment or of having expectations for a particular outcome okay so if you feel like you can help your masculine from that deta detached space of unconditional love yeah or if you are being called to work together even um, from now okay listen to your intuition it is it is heightening at the moment all right guys those were the messages I hope this made sense and thank you for watching. Much love.